UK driving theory test. Practice test number three. One. A tanker is involved in a collision. Which sign shows that it's carrying dangerous goods? Correct answer, B explanation. There will be an orange label on the side and rear of the tanker. Look at this carefully and report what it says when you phone the emergency services. Details of hazard warning plates are given in the highway code too. You're approaching a roundabout. There are horses just ahead of you. What should you do? A. Accelerate the past as quickly as possible. B. Give them plenty of room. C. Sound your horn as a warning. D. Treat them like any other vehicle. Correct answer. B. Give them plenty of room. Explanation. Horse riders often keep to the outside of the roundabout even if they're turning right. Give them plenty of room and remember that they may have to cross lanes of traffic. 3. Which vehicles should use the left-hand lane on a three-lane motorway? A. Any vehicle. B. Emergency vehicles only. C. Large vehicles only. D. Slow vehicles only. Correct answer. A. Any vehicle. Explanation. On a motorway, all traffic should use the left-hand lane unless overtaking. When overtaking a number of slower vehicles, move back to the left-hand lane when you're safely passed. Check your mirrors frequently and don't stay in the middle or right-hand lane if the left-hand lane is free. 4. You've had a breakdown on the hard shoulder of a motorway. When the problem has been fixed, how should you rejoin the main carriageway? A. Gain speed on the hard shoulder before moving out onto the carriageway. B. Move out onto the carriageway using your hazard warning lights. C. Move out onto the carriageway, then build up your speed. D. Wait on the hard shoulder until someone flashes their headlights at you. Correct answer. Again, speed on the hard shoulder before moving out onto the carriageway. Explanation. Signal your intention and build up sufficient speed on the hard shoulder so that you can filter into a safe gap in the traffic. Don't push your way in causing other traffic to alter speed or direction. 5. What does a sign with a brown background show? A. Minor roads. B. Motorway routes. C. Primary roads. D. Tourist directions. Correct answer. D. Tourist directions. Explanation. Signs with a brown background give directions to places of interest. They're often seen on a motorway, directing you along the easiest route to the attraction. 6. What does this sign mean? A. Give way to farm vehicles. B. Give way to trams. C. Wait at the barriers. D. Wait at the crossroads. Correct answer. B. Give way to trams. Explanation. Obey the give way signs. Trams are unable to steer around you if you misjudge when it's safe to enter the junction. 7. What does this sign mean? A. Cattle grid ahead. B. Gated road ahead. C. Level crossing with gate or barrier. D. Level crossing without gate or barrier. Correct answer. C. Level crossing with gate or barrier. Explanation. Some crossings have gates but no attendant or signals. You should stop, look both ways, listen and make sure that no train is approaching. If there's a telephone, contact the signal operator to make sure it's safe to cross. 8. What should you do when you see this sign at a crossroads? A. Carry on with great care. B. Find another route. C. Maintain the same speed. D. Telephone the police. Correct answer. A. Carry on with great care. Explanation. When traffic lights are out of order, treat the junction as an unmarked crossroads. Be very careful and be prepared to stop. No one has priority. 9. On a three-lane motorway, which lane should you normally use? A. Center. B. Either the right or center. C. Lefty right. Correct answer. C. Left. Explanation. On a three-lane motorway, you should travel in the left-hand lane unless you're overtaking. 
This applies regardless of the speed at which you're traveling. 10. You're parked on the road at night. Where must you use parking lights? Or where the speed limit exceeds 30 miles per hour. B. Where there are continuous white lines in the middle of the road. C. Where you're facing oncoming traffic. D. Where you're near a bus stop. Correct answer. A. Where the speed limit exceeds 30 miles per hour. Explanation. When parking at night. Park in the direction of the traffic. This will enable other road users to see the reflectors on the rear of your vehicle. Use your parking lights if the speed limit is over 30 miles per hour. 11. You notice horse riders in front. What should you do first? A. Accelerate around them. B. Pull out to the middle of the road. C. Signal right. D. Slow down and be ready to stop. Correct answer. D. Slow down and be ready to stop. Explanation. Be particularly careful when approaching horse riders. Slow down and be prepared to stop. Always pass wide and slowly. And look out for signals given by the riders. Horses are unpredictable. Always treat them as potential hazards and take great care when passing them. 12. Why is it unwise to follow this vehicle too closely? A. Your brakes will overheat. B. But your engine will overheat. C. Your view ahead will be increased. D. Your view ahead will be reduced. Correct answer. D. Your view ahead will be reduced. Explanation. Staying back will increase your view of the road ahead. This will help you to see any hazards that might occur and give you more time to react. 13. You're using a smart motorway. What happens when it's operating? A. Speed limits above lanes are advisory. B. The national speed limit will apply. C. The speed limit is always 30 miles per hour. D. You must obey the speed limits shown. Correct answer. D. You must obey the speed limits shown. Explanation. When a smart motorway is operating, you must follow the mandatory signs on the gantries above each lane, including the hard shoulder. Variable speed limits help keep the traffic moving and also help to prevent bunching. 14. You shouldn't normally travel on the hard shoulder of a motorway. When can you use it? A. When signs direct you to. B. When taking the next exit. C. When traffic is slow moving. D. When traffic is stopped. Correct answer. A. When signs direct you to. Explanation. Normally. You should only use the hard shoulder for emergencies and breakdowns, and at roadworks when signs direct you to do so. Smart motorways use active traffic management to ease congestion. In these areas, the hard shoulder may be used as a running lane when speed limit signs are shown directly above. 15. After this hazard you should test your brakes. Why is this? A. You'll be going down a long hill. B. You'll be on a slippery road. C. You'll have just crossed a long bridge. D. Your brakes will be soaking wet. Correct answer. D. Your brakes will be soaking wet. Explanation. A ford is a crossing over a stream that's shallow enough to drive or ride through. After you've gone through a ford or deep puddle, your brakes will be wet and they won't work as well as usual. To dry them out, apply a light brake pressure while moving slowly. Don't travel at normal speeds until you're sure your brakes are working properly again. 16. What's the maximum speed of powered wheelchairs or scooters used by disabled people? A. 12 miles per hour. B. 16 miles per hour. C. 20 miles per hour. D. 8 miles per hour. Correct answer, D8 miles per hour. Explanation. Some powered wheelchairs and mobility scooters are designed for use on the pavement only and cannot exceed 4 miles per hour, 6 kilometers per hour. Others can go on the road as well. And this category cannot exceed 8 miles per hour, 12 kilometers per hour. Take great care around these vehicles. They're extremely vulnerable because of their low speed and small size. 17. You're in a tunnel and you see this sign. 
What does it mean? A. Beware of pedestrians crossing ahead. B. Beware of pedestrians, no footpath ahead. C. Direction to emergency pedestrian exit. D. No access for pedestrians. Correct answer. C. Direction to emergency pedestrian exit. Explanation. If you have to leave your vehicle and get out of a tunnel by an emergency exit, do so as quickly as you can. Follow the signs directing you to the nearest exit point. If there are several people using the exit, don't panic but try to leave in a calm and orderly manner. 18. When may you stop on a motorway? A. If you have to read a map. B. If your mobile phone rings. C. In an emergency or breakdown. D. When you're tired and need a rest. Correct answer. C. In an emergency or breakdown. Explanation. You shouldn't normally stop on a motorway, but there may be occasions when you need to do so. If you're unfortunate enough to break down. Make every effort to pull up on the hard shoulder. 19. At an incident, a casualty is unconscious. You need to check whether they're breathing. How long should you allow for this check? A. At least one minute. B. At least ten seconds. C. At least two minutes. D. At least two seconds. Correct answer. B. At least ten seconds. Explanation. Once the casualty's airway is open. Listen and feel for breath. Do this by placing your cheek over their mouth and nose and look to see if their chest rises. This should be done for up to 10 seconds. If you cannot detect any breathing, you should begin compressions. 20. What does this sign mean? A. Hump bridge. B. Low bridge. C. Traffic calming hump. D. Uneven road. Correct answer. A hump bridge. Explanation. You'll need to slow down. At hump bridges, your view ahead will be restricted and the road will often be narrow. If the bridge is very steep, sound your horn to warn others of your approach. Going over the bridge too fast is highly dangerous to other road users and could even cause your wheels to leave the road with the resulting loss of control. 21. You're driving on an icy road. How can you avoid wheel spin? A. Brake gently and repeatedly. B. Drive at a slow speed in as high a gear as possible. C. Drive in a low gear at all times. D. Use the handbrake if the wheels start to slip. Correct answer. B. Drive at a slow speed in as high a gear as possible. Explanation. If you're traveling on an icy road, extra caution will be required to avoid loss of control. Keeping your speed down and using the highest gear possible will reduce the risk of the tires losing their grip on this slippery surface. 22. You're about to reverse into a side road. A pedestrian is waiting to cross behind you. What should you do? A. Give way to the pedestrian. B. Reverse before the pedestrian starts to cross. C. Sound your horn to warn the pedestrian. D. Wave to the pedestrian to stop. Correct answer. A give way to the pedestrian. Explanation. If you need to reverse into a side road, try to find a place that's free from traffic and pedestrians. Look all around before and during the maneuver. Stop and give way to any pedestrians who want to cross behind you. Avoid waving them across, sounding the horn, flashing your lights or giving any signals that could mislead them and create a dangerous situation. 23. What does this white arrow on the road ahead mean? A. All vehicles turn left. B. Entrance on the left. C. Keep left of the hatched markings. D. Road bends to the left. Correct answer. C. Keep left of the hatched markings. Explanation. Don't attempt to overtake here, as there might be unseen hazards over the brow of the hill. Keep to the left. 24. Which of the following types of glasses shouldn't be worn when driving at night? A. Bifocal. B. Half moon. C. Round. D. Tinted. Correct answer. D. Tinted. Explanation. 
If you're driving at night or in poor visibility, tinted lenses will reduce the efficiency of your vision by reducing the amount of light reaching your eyes. 25. You're turning right onto a dual carriageway. What should you do before emerging? A. Check that the central reservation is wide enough for your vehicle. B. Make sure that you leave enough room for a vehicle behind. C. Position your vehicle well to the left of the side road. D. Stop, apply the handbrake and then select a low gear. Correct answer. A. Check that the central reservation is wide enough for your vehicle. Explanation. Before emerging right onto a dual carriageway. Make sure that the central reservation is deep enough to protect your vehicle. If it isn't, you should treat the dual carriageway as one road and check that it's clear in both directions before pulling out. Neglecting to do this could place parts or all of your vehicle in the path of approaching traffic and cause a collision. 26. What should you do as you approach a long road tunnel? A. Chain down to a lower gear. B. Make sure your radio is tuned to the frequency shown. C. Put on your sunglasses and use the sun visor. D. Turn your headlights onto the main beam. Correct answer. B. Make sure your radio is tuned to the frequency shown. Explanation. On the approach to tunnels, a sign will usually show a local radio channel. This should give a warning of any incidents or congestion in the tunnel ahead. Many radios can be set to automatically pick up traffic announcements and local frequencies. If you have to tune the radio manually, don't be distracted while doing so. Incidents in tunnels can lead to serious casualties. The greatest hazard is fire. Getting an advance warning of problems could save your life and others. 27. You have a collision while your car is moving. What's the first thing you must do? A. Call the emergency services. B. Call your insurance company. C. Stop at the scene of the incident. D. Stop only if someone waves at you. Correct answer. C. Stop at the scene of the incident. Explanation. If you're in a collision that causes damage or injury to any other person, vehicle, animal or property, by law you must stop. Give your name, the vehicle owner's name and address, and the vehicle's registration number to anyone who has reasonable grounds for requesting them. 28. At a Pelican Crossing, what must you do when the amber light is flashing? A. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. B. Give way to pedestrians waiting to cross. C. Stop and wait for the green light. D. Stop and wait for the red light. Correct answer. A. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. Explanation. Pelican crossings are signal controlled crossings operated by pedestrians. Push button controls change the signals. Pelican crossings have no red and amber stage before green. Instead, they have a flashing amber light. This means you must give way to pedestrians who are already on the crossing. If the crossing is clear, however, you can continue. 29. You're waiting to come out of a side road. Why should you look carefully for motorcycles? A. Motorcycles are usually faster than cars. B. Motorcycles can easily be hidden behind obstructions. C. Motorcycles have the right of way. D. Police patrols often use motorcycles. Correct answer. B. Motorcycles can easily be hidden behind obstructions. Explanation. If you're waiting to emerge from a side road, look carefully for motorcycles. They can be difficult to see. Be especially careful if there are parked vehicles or other obstructions restricting your view. 30. What does this sign mean? A. End of clearway. B. End of cycle route. C. End of restricted parking area. D. End of restricted speed area. Correct answer. C. End of restricted parking area. Explanation. Even though you've left the restricted area, make sure that you park where you won't endanger other road users or cause an obstruction. 31. Which sign means no stopping? The 
correct answer. B. Explanation. Stopping where this clear way restriction applies is likely to cause congestion. Allow the traffic to flow by obeying the signs. 32. What is a cover note? A. A document issued before you receive your MOT certificate. B. A document issued before you receive your driving license. C. A document issued before you receive your insurance certificate. D. A document issued before you receive your registration document. Correct answer. C. A document issued before you receive your insurance certificate. Explanation. Sometimes an insurance company will issue a temporary insurance certificate called a cover note. It gives you the same insurance cover as your certificate but lasts for a limited period, usually one month. 33. You're signaling to turn right in busy traffic. How would you confirm your intention safely? A. Flash your headlights. B. Give an arm signal. C. Position over the center line. D. Sound the horn. Correct answer. B. Give an arm signal. Explanation. In some situations, you may feel your indicators can't be seen by other road users. If you think you need to make your intention more obvious, give the arm signal shown in the Highway Code 34. You've just gone through deep water. What should you do to make sure your brakes are working properly? A. Accelerate and keep to a high speed for a short time. B. Avoid using the brakes at all for a few miles. C. Go slowly while gently applying the brakes. D. Stop for at least an hour to allow them time to dry. Correct answer. C. Go slowly while gently applying the brakes. Explanation. Water on the brakes will act as a lubricant, causing them to work less efficiently. Using the brakes lightly as you go along will quickly dry them out. 35. How should you overtake a long, slow-moving vehicle on a busy road? A. Flash your headlights for the oncoming traffic to give way. B. Follow it closely and keep moving out to see the road ahead. C. Keep well back until you can see that it's clear. D. Stay behind until the driver waves you past. Correct answer. C. Keep well back until you can see that it's clear. Explanation. When you're following a long vehicle, stay well back so that you can get a better view of the road ahead. The closer you get, the less you'll be able to see on the road. Be patient and don't take a gamble. Only overtake when you're certain that you can complete the maneuver safely. 36. You see this amber traffic light ahead. Which light or lights will come on next? A. Green alone. B. Green and amber together. C. Red alone. D. Red and amber together. Correct answer. C. Red alone. Explanation. At junctions controlled by traffic lights. You must stop behind the white line until the lights change to green. A red light, an amber light, and red and amber lights showing together all mean stop. You may proceed when the light is green unless your exit road is blocked or pedestrians are crossing in front of you. If you're approaching traffic lights that are visible from a distance and the light has been green for some time, be ready to slow down and stop because the lights are likely to change. 37. You're on a motorway. A red cross is displayed above the hard shoulder. What does this mean? A. Pull up in this lane to answer your mobile phone. B. This lane can be used if you need a rest. C. Use this lane as a running lane. D. You shouldn't travel in this lane. Correct answer. D. You shouldn't travel in this lane. Explanation. Active traffic management operates on some motorways. Within these areas, at certain times, the hard shoulder will be used as a running lane. A red cross above the hard shoulder shows that this lane should only be used for emergencies and breakdowns. 38. The road is wet. Why might a motorcyclist steer round drain covers on a bend? A. To avoid puncturing the tires on the edge of the drain covers. B. To avoid splashing pedestrians on the pavement. C. 
to help judge the bend using the drain covers as marker points. D. To prevent the motorcycle sliding on the metal drain covers. Correct answer. D. To prevent the motorcycle sliding on the metal drain covers. Explanation. Other drivers or riders may have to change course due to the size or characteristics of their vehicle. Understanding this will help you to anticipate their actions. Motorcyclists and cyclists will be checking the road ahead for uneven or slippery surfaces, especially in wet weather. They may need to move across their lane to avoid surface hazards such as potholes and drain covers. 39. You're in a tunnel and you see this sign. What does it mean? A. Beware of pedestrians crossing ahead. B. Beware of pedestrians, no footpath ahead. C. Direction to emergency pedestrian exit. D. No access for pedestrians. Correct answer. C. Direction to emergency pedestrian exit. Explanation. If you have to leave your vehicle and get out of a tunnel by an emergency exit, do so as quickly as you can. Follow the signs directing you to the nearest exit point. If there are several people using the exit, don't panic but try to leave in a calm and orderly manner. 40. You're involved in a collision. Afterwards, which document may the police ask you to produce? A. Driving license. B. Theory test certificate. C. Vehicle registration document. D. Vehicle service record. Correct answer. A. Driving license. Explanation. You must stop if you've been involved in a collision which results in injury or damage. The police may ask to see your driving license and insurance details at the time or later at a police station. 41. What should you do if your anti-lock brakes abs warning light stays on? A. Check that the handbrake is released. B. Check the brake fluid level. C. Check the foot brake free play. D. Have the brakes checked immediately. Correct answer. D. Have the brakes checked immediately. Explanation. Consult the vehicle handbook or a garage before driving the vehicle any further. Only drive to a garage if it's safe to do so. If you aren't sure, get expert's help. 42. You're driving on a motorway and have to slow down quickly due to a hazard ahead. How can you warn drivers of the hazard? A. Flash your headlights. B. Sound your horn. C. Switch on your hazard warning lights. D. Switch on your headlights. Correct answer. C. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Explanation. Using your hazard warning lights, as well as your brake lights, will give following traffic an extra warning of the problem ahead. Only use them for long enough for your warning to be seen. 43. You're driving a vehicle that has anti-lock brakes. How should you apply the foot brake when you need to stop in an emergency? A. Rapidly and firmly. B. Rapidly and gently. C. Slowly and gently. D. Slowly but firmly. Correct answer. A. Rapidly and firmly. Explanation. You may have to stop in an emergency due to a misjudgment by another driver or a hazard arising suddenly, such as a child running out into the road. If your vehicle has anti-lock brakes, you should apply the brakes immediately and keep them firmly applied until you stop. 44. What will be the result of having your vehicle properly serviced? A. Better fuel economy. B. Lower vehicle excise duty, road tax. C. Reduced insurance premiums. D. Slower journey times. Correct answer. A. Better fuel economy. Explanation. All vehicles need to be serviced to keep working efficiently. An efficient engine uses less fuel and produces fewer harmful emissions than an engine that's running inefficiently. Keeping the vehicle service to the manufacturer's schedule should also make it more reliable and reduce the chance of it breaking down. 45. When may you drive a motor car in this bus lane? A. Outside its hours of operation. B. To get to the front of a traffic queue. C. To overtake slow-moving traffic. D. You may not use it at any time. 
Correct answer. A. Outside its hours of operation. Explanation. Some bus lanes operate only during peak hours and other vehicles may use them outside these hours. Make sure you check the sign for the hours of operation before driving in a bus lane. 46. You're driving in BZ traffic. You want to pull up on the left just after a junction on the left. When should you signal? A. As you're passing or just after the junction. B. It would be better not to signal at all. C. Just before you reach the junction. D. Well before you reach the junction. Correct answer. A. As you're passing or just after the junction. Explanation. You need to signal to let other drivers know your intentions. However, if you indicate too early, they may think you're turning left into the junction. Correct timing of the signal is very important to avoid misleading others. 47. You're waiting to emerge from a junction. The windscreen pillar is restricting your view. What should you be particularly aware of? A. Buses. B. Coaches. C. Lorries. D. Motorcyclists. Correct answer. D. Motorcyclists. Explanation. Windscreen pillars can completely block your view of pedestrians, motorcyclists and cyclists. You should make a particular effort to look for these road users. Don't just rely on a quick glance. 48. In which conditions should you leave at least a two-second gap between your vehicle and the one in front? A. Damp. B. Dry. C. Foggy. D. Wet. Correct answer. B. Dry. Explanation. In good, dry conditions, a driver needs to keep her distance of at least two seconds from the car in front. This should allow enough space for you to stop if the driver in front has to stop suddenly. 49. What will happen if you hold the clutch pedal down or roll in neutral for too long? A. It will cause the engine to overheat. B. It will improve tire wear. C. It will reduce your control. D. It will use more fuel. Correct answer. C. It will reduce your control. Explanation. Holding the clutch down or staying in neutral for too long will cause your vehicle to freewheel. This is known as coasting, and it's dangerous because it reduces your control of the vehicle. 50. Your vehicle breaks down on the hard shoulder of a motorway. You need to use your mobile phone to call for help. What should you do? A. Check your location from the marker posts on the left. B. Open the bonnet to help the emergency services know you've broken down. C. Phone a friend and ask them to come and collect you. D. Stand at the rear of the vehicle while making the call. Correct answer. A. Check your location from the marker posts on the left. Explanation. You should use an emergency telephone when you break down on the motorway. Only use your mobile if this isn't possible. The emergency services need to know your exact location so they can reach you as quickly as possible. Look for a number on the nearest marker post beside the hard shoulder. Give this number when you call the emergency services.